Back in the 5th century BC, the Greek philosopher Philolaus suggested that the Earth is not the center of the universe. But it took almost 2,000 years to prove it. Only in the 16th century did Nicholas Copernicus build a mathematical model of the solar system. But in his time, Uranus and Neptune were not yet known to mankind. Seven neighboring planets of the Earth were finally found only in 1846. Pluto was spotted even later in the 1930s. And other dwarf planets from the Kuiper Belt are being found to this day. Every discovery in the field of space is a work whose traces go back to the deep past. It's a mistake to think that we were born too early to explore space. There are still a lot of epoch-making discoveries connected with it. Take, for example, the planets. And not those that are nearby, but those that are located outside our solar system. Copernicus and other astronomers of even more ancient times suspected their presence. Captain Jacob, an astronomer from India, declared in 1885 that he had found the first exoplanet in the constellation Ophiuchus. But even in the Age of Progress, it took almost a hundred years for official confirmation. It happened in 1988 when Canadian astronomers spotted a planet in the constellation Cepheus. And even then, their calculations were finally approved only in 2003. The other day, NASA announced that the milestone of 5,000 confirmed exoplanets has been overcome. But it's worth noting that this list is constantly being adjusted. Some candidates are crossed out, and some rejected ones are returned on the contrary. Why is this happening? The Hubble telescope in early April quietly discovered a star at a distance of almost 13 billion light years. It would seem that finding a planet much closer, a couple of thousand light years away from us, should not be a problem for him. But unfortunately, everything is a bit more complicated. Because the planets are suddenly much dimmer than the stars, you don't have to go far for an example. The star Betelgeuse is 642 light years away, and this does not prevent it from being 10 times brighter than the planet Neptune in the night sky. And it, by cosmic standards, is located in the backyard of the Earth. But even this is not the worst thing. The worst is that the planets revolve around the stars. Imagine that you fly away from the solar system and look back. The planets will almost immediately disappear from view, while the sun will shine for a very long time. No wonder, because it makes up 99.86% of the mass of the system, and the size and brightness will outshine planets without any trouble. Let's say you've flown to your destination, taken out a telescope, and are trying to peer into the sun. What will you see? That's right, a bright point of a star and nothing else. Yes, planets reflect light and are not absolutely dim, but their brightness is a grain of sand compared to the amount of light that star gives. How to get out of the situation? Logic suggests that firstly, it's necessary to look for exoplanets near the solar system, and secondly, to look for planets big enough, like Jupiter, and preferably hotter, because it's a little easier to separate the exoplanet from its luminary. Oh, and it would be great if the star itself would be small and dim. Logic will not deceive you. According to such a simple scheme, most of the exoplanets were found. To deal with the problem of excessive brightness of stars in comparison with planets, scientists resort to several methods at once. The easiest for us to understand is the method of eclipses. When a planet passes through the parent star, it can be seen as a black dot when viewed from afar. And if it's orbiting, voila, you found an exoplanet. There are other, more complex ways. Along with them, methods of analyzing exoplanets are also evolving. If 20 years ago we were happy to at least find something, now scientists can even talk about the presence of an atmosphere, and the James Webb Telescope can even sniff methane on distant exoplanets. This gas is known to be one of the main signs of life, but this is an idea for a separate video. Now we'll talk about truly unique exoplanets found by scientists. Recalling that most of the pictures in our video are the representation of artists, in reality, in most cases, we would see the exoplanet as a tiny blurry dot. And our first guest is AB Aurigae b. This is an exoplanet that was found in early April 2022 at a distance of 508 light years. And it immediately broke the brain of NASA, at least by the fact that this planet is still a baby. Actually, this is the first exoplanet found at such an early stage of formation, and one of the few that we actually photographed. AB Aurigae b, unlike most exoplanets, is not just numbers and mathematical calculations. 
we have photos from the Hubble and Subaru telescopes, which show a very young star, AB Arrigae, in the constellation of the Charioteer. It's twice the size of our Sun and 60 times brighter. And we suggest that AB Arrigae is young because it's only a few million years old. For a comparison, our Sun is almost 5 billion. Some people were already walking on Earth when AB Arrigae did not exist yet. This fact is incredible itself. But even more incredible is that the photo shows not only the star, but also the so-called protoplanetary disk. This is a porridge of matter that surrounds the star, and from which planets are subsequently formed. According to scientists, humanity has not seen yet such young systems as AB Arrigae, and with the presence of an exoplanet in the protoplanetary disk has brought the scientific community to ecstasy. You can even see it in the photo, and the planet is still a baby, and quite well fed, because the mass of the exoplanet is nine times greater than that of Jupiter. And as we all know, it's the heaviest planet in the solar system. The distance from the star is another striking fact about an exoplanet, because it rotates 93 times farther from it than our Earth is from the Sun. Even the most distant planet of our system, Neptune, is three times closer to the Sun than AB Arrigae B is to its star. This became another discovery. After all, it was previously believed that a gas giant could not physically form so far from the star. Somehow, the disk around AB Arrigae cooled down but did not dissipate. And thanks to the new exoplanet, we know that there is at least one more way to form a planet similar to Jupiter, or even a star. To be more precise, a brown dwarf. This is the smallest type of stars, the size of which is usually equal to Jupiter. But the density of brown dwarfs is much higher, and due to their large mass, thermonuclear processes are triggered in them. This distinguishes a gas giant from a star. Our Jupiter, in the process of formation, could not start a nuclear reaction in itself. To do this, he would need to be 80 to 90 times heavier. The exoplanet found by scientists is also too small to turn into a star. But thanks to it, we understand more about how this process happens in general. Our next guest is the exoplanet K218b, at a distance of 124 light years. The planet revolves around the star K218, which is located in the constellation Leo. This star is a red dwarf, which is half the size and half the weight of the Sun. It is quite cold, and the habitable zone where the heat from the star will be enough, this star has much less. What makes the K218b exoplanet unique is that in spite of everything, it's situated just in this habitable zone. The year there lasts only 33 days, and the planet itself is a little more than two times larger than Earth and eight times heavier. But what's most remarkable is the confirmed presence of water vapor in the atmosphere of an exoplanet. Two independent teams of scientists came to this conclusion at once. The internet instantly exploded with news about the existence of a habitable planet. But this is not entirely true. Firstly, this exoplanet, due to its proximity to the star, is always turned to it with one side. That means that on the reverse side, there's always night. Secondly, despite the fact that water vapor is also found on Ceres, we can't say that this dwarf planet was inhabited. Thirdly, red dwarfs are very active stars, which, despite the low solar wind power, emit almost as much as yellow dwarfs like our Sun. And this is a problem, because our exoplanet is located much closer to the star than the Earth is to the Sun and it will be blown with extreme portion of radiation. And finally, due to the tidal capture of the star, the exoplanet most likely will not rotate. This means that it also will not have a magnetic field, which should protect from solar radiation. However, there are reasons for a good mood. The influence of magnetic fields on protection from solar radiation is greatly exaggerated. After all, Venus, for example, has no magnetic field, but the atmosphere is much stronger than the Earth. Also, a preliminary analysis of temperatures showed that K218b is usually around zero Celsius, and this is quite a suitable value for life. And strictly speaking, we have no idea what life looks like on other planets. We only know the Earth, and space can store a lot of surprises. In any case, finding water vapor in the atmosphere of a planet 500 light years from Earth is definitely a reason for a glass of champagne. And our next guest is a little closer. The planet HD 189733b is located just 63 light years from the constellation of Chantrelles. Thanks to this, we even have a photo of a beautiful blue giant. The size of an exoplanet is about the size of Jupiter, 
and the color is very similar to the Earth. This is a world that looks blue from afar, but if a space traveler decides to go down on it, he will make the main mistake in his life. And the last one, due to its proximity to the star, the temperature on the exoplanet is about 1000 degrees Celsius. In addition to this, from east to west, there is a hurricane constantly blowing twice as fast as the speed of sound. Well, the picture of the apocalypse world is completed by rains of red-hot molten glass. By the way, water vapor was also found on this exoplanet, and this is another proof that its presence does not even mean the existence of life. It's hard to even imagine it on this planet. And now, let's finish our video with a truly unique exoplanet at least because M51 ULS-1 is not in our galaxy. As we said earlier, because of the brightness of the stars, it's difficult to find planets. All 5,000 planets found by mankind are the ones inside the Milky Way. There is only one candidate for exoplanets outside our home galaxy, and this is M51 ULS-1. It comes from the spiral galaxy Whirlpool, and it's a mind-blowing 28 million light-years away from us. However, using the Chandra telescope, using X-rays, astronomers have recorded something very similar to the planet. There is very little information about her. Approximately, it's located in a binary system consisting of a black hole and an ordinary star, or from a neutron star and an ordinary one. The exoplanet, if the calculations turn out to be true, revolves around a binary system at a distance of 40 astronomical units. It's the size of Saturn and temperatures on the surface can reach thousands of degrees Celsius. And it's no wonder, given the presence of a neutron star and a giant star in the system at the same time. Unfortunately, we will not be able to confirm or deny the discovery of this exoplanet only after 70 years. Because of the large orbit, only then it will pass through the disk of the star again so that scientists can verify the data. But perhaps, thanks to a revolutionary technique, during this time we'll find other exoplanets. As you can see, the process is very difficult and long, and at the same time, it's quite honorary for those who are engaged in it. So don't think that in space everything has already been studied. It's better to like and subscribe to the channel. After all, the conquest of space is just beginning.